What's up guys, Ivan Carranza here and right now I'm on the train back home I've got about three hours till I'm there I just finished teaching and I figured I would just do a quick video on you know, bass playing <laughs> um, to you know use the time for something practical and the topic I want to cover today is um, feeling the bass and its relationship to you know the note length or the length of your notes. That's something that I've noticed uh, um, with a lot of students and bass players, myself included. I mean, I I've, I struggled with that, um, and it was with this little concept or tip, trick, whatever you want to call it, that my playing really, really improved. And you know, when you're playing live, everything that you do is amplified. So. What you hear on the stage or on your in-ear monitors, the audience hears that you know amplified by x amount of times, but it's way louder than what you perceive on stage. So every little detail that you're playing is amplified. Every uh, you know attack on the strings, every um, slap, pop, dead note is amplified. And what is also amplified is the silence and how long you hold a note and because we play bass we play you know low frequencies those frequencies fill the room and what i've seen in a lot of people like i mentioned myself included and i'm still working on that um is that people cut the, note, the notes too short most of the time that's the number one thing uh playing them too long also happens but when you cut them too short it's it's really where the most of the problems lie. And why is that? Um, when you're living in space, and that means when, you're stop, when you stop playing, when you're cutting notes, um, those silences are also in the subdivision of time. So if you're playing quarter notes, but you're not actually playing quarter notes, um, you're playing more like some hybrid between a, a, an eighth note and a, a dotted eighth note um, so the groove is not receiving what it actually needs so if you, the time is like one two three four and, and I'm holding those tones till the next beat comes but if I'm cutting the note short like one and two and three and four and you know um, then those silences don't match the subdivision of the tune. Now, one great concept to um, to correct that or to improve your playing, and that's something that was taught to me or, or shown um, to me by one of my former teachers and who I would like to call my friend, uh, Torsten Hayes, a bass player from here from Germany. And that's it's to imagine that when you're playing a note, when you're holding a note, you're kind of like compressing the room because it's kind of like the same effect as if you're at a club or, or you stand right beside your bass cap that you feel you know the air being pushed by the speaker so when you play a note it's like like right beside you so you can imagine that as you're playing any kind of note that you're compressing the room and that creates kind of like tension and release moments. If you're pressing a note, you're playing a note, you're creating tension like and when you stop you're releasing. So you're actively interacting with the room and when you are become conscious of that you definitely start playing differently because your, your notes don't only have a harmonic content because you're playing pitches and you're playing rhythms as well but like I said what you play has also a physical effect um, not only with the rest of the band but with the audience too and the room so that way you start thinking more consciously of, of when you play notes as well when you play and when, when you don't play because what you actually do has a greater effect than what you might imagine and by doing that it's also easier to, to to find a relationship between your notes and what the rest of the band is playing. So for example, if you want, um, or, or 
to say it another way, you can use that concept also to feature other instruments by your note length. So for example, one thing that I really like to do is um, playing with the snare, with the snare drum, because if you want to feature what the snare is doing, you just cut your note right before the snare comes and it's gonna appear as if it was louder than what it actually is. And that is something like when you're in a conversation and everyone's talking and everyone's talking and then <laughs> right at that time everyone's silent and somebody drops an f-bomb or you know some word or some comment and that just you know sticks out in this awkward silence other than what he just said he or she just said um, that same concept applies to the other instrument so you might be playing a groove and the drummer's playing right before the snare comes you just stop playing and that snare hit is gonna appear to be much louder that can be done also with hi-hats with uh, bass drums with cymbals and not only with drums with guitars as well so if there's a guitar playing even a funky guitar for example like check it 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 and he's doing some kind of fills here and there you might want to feature them some of them but just stop him playing and then you give the guitar player more room to play but the, the, the key thing or the the important thing is to, to cut your notes at the right time and one great way to, to practice that is just to make a, a loop with a drum machine for example or you can even do it with a metronome if you don't have a drum machine but even if you don't you can just google or youtube you know drum loop 80 bpm or something um, and just play one single note just to take for example sorry a C and just play the note and try to to hold it for different amount of times so for example try to hold it for one exact quarter note um, so you've, you've played one two three four and you have a you know a snare on two and four then you hold your note until the snare comes so one two three four one two three four um, maybe you want to hold it for an eighth note so one and two and three and four and um, and that way you still pay more attention to your surroundings as well and what I've noticed so far and not only on myself but also on my students whenever they start paying more attention to what especially what the drummer is doing and how their notes interact with the, with the playing of the drummer all the grooves start to sound way better they start to sound um, more in line more relaxed as well and you start playing different as well because you notice that you might not need to do as much to to make something sound good so um, I would like to leave you guys with that concept I'm gonna do a video of um, you know more in depth about that topic but I'm on the train right now so I can do a lot but I hope you find this helpful let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next one take care